everybody. Welcome back to Jack's Little Wildlife. Now today, or should I say tonight, we're actually going to be setting up a light trap specifically for some of the most gorgeous beetles out here in West Texas, Chrysina. Now these are iridescent green beetles. There's two species we have out here, Wood Eye and Gloriosa. I'm hoping to get both species. So we've got the light trap, we've set it. It's been going for a few minutes, now we're gonna go check on it. And fingers crossed we get some really cool beetles and we get a ton of them. So let's get going. All right, check this out guys. So we've made it to the light trap and we have actually had a wonderful Chrysina show up. This is Chrysina gloriosa, the glorious jewel scarab. Look at these colors. This is actually the smaller species. And as adults, these feed on juniper, uh, which is very interesting. And they're actually primarily diurnal, which means they're active during the day, whereas most beetles are active during the night. Uh, but they'll still come to the sheets because they cannot resist. Oh, the beautiful lights. Look at that beautiful color. Now it's actually been jabbing me really, really hard with these um, spines right at the end of the leg, right before the foot segment. And it is really hurting me. Ah, oh, golly, they're super sharp tarsal claws. Eee, eee. But they can hold on really well. Take a look at that. Really, really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beetle. I'm hoping to get the larger species, Chrysina wood eye as well. Oh, really cool. All right, guys, check this out. This is the other species we were looking for. This is Chrysina wood eye. A much, much larger, and in my opinion, a much more beautiful beetle. Come here, not done. But take a look. Here, I wanna show you something really cool about these. Do you see those beautiful blue hands, those tarsi? Oh, hey. Look at the colors on the legs of that beetle. Is that not just one of the most beautiful beetles you've ever seen in your life? Now this species feeds primarily on walnut leaves. Again, another leaf eater. They are gorgeous little scarabs. This looks to be a smaller male. The females can get bigger than this. There he goes, right to our trap. There he is right here. Beautiful, beautiful beetle. There he goes, straight to the light trap. Let's find some more, shall we? All right, take a look at what I just found. This is a little mantis fly or mantispid. So they've got those raptorial arms like a praying mantis. But they are flies, look at that. Oh, where did you go? Anyway, they're super cool. It's gone now, but maybe we'll find another. <laughs> this should all be the same if they're different. That'd be pretty cool. Go on. Yeah. All right, so we've been collecting a bunch of ant queens that have flown to our um, little light trap, but take a look at what has decided to just rest on me. This landed on me like five minutes ago, and I've been walking around, and it's just, just hanging out. It's a little sphingid moth, or hummingbird moth, as they are called. Decent-sized moth, and I'm just, I'm just going to let it just hang out. I don't mind. Well, let's see what else pops up at our light trap. Hold on. Now. Yeah. Well, first off, this is another, like... This is like 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe, that this moth has been on me. Has not moved, has not left, has not gone to the light trap, has not done anything other than just cherish me, which I appreciate. I love you, moth. But anyway, take a look at something interesting I have seen in this tree. Right here. Another Christina wood eye. Come here. Oh, there we go. Just look at the colors on this. Now these are freshly eclosed. So what that means is they have just pretty much pupated, hardened up and flew out. So they are, I mean, ridiculously colorful. Now that beautiful green color is actually structural coloration. Now what that means is that 
It's the very layering of the molecules and makeup of this beetle's exoskeleton that reflects light in a certain way to create this beautiful color. It's not like pigment like we have in our skin. Um, it is actually totally dependent on uh, the light for the sheen. So you can kind of look, if I kind of tilt it, you can kind of see how it's like iridescent, right? The underside of that beetle. And that is because it's dependent on the angle of light hitting it. Really, really nice beetle, really beautiful. Look at that. Put it on my face, on my nose or something. Oh man, he's really got me right on the nose. Oh? Hmm, interesting. He's actually really digging in really hard on my nose. <gasps> Exfoliating. Anyway, really cool. Really spectacular. Let's see if we find any more. Okay guys, so check this out. This is a little bark scorpion that has caught a moth. Now what's really cool about scorpions, and actually a lot of arachnids, is that they appear to glow under black light. So this is a really good way to find them because they glow in the dark, essentially, when under these black lights. How cool is that? So he's feasting on a moth on this little bush. Let's see, let's zoom in. Oh yeah, that is awesome. Look at how cool that scorpion looks. Take a look, oh, 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 at the size of this moss. Come here, come here. Of course, my moth as well, my resident moth. Look at that, it's like the size of a mouse. Oh, I'm gonna bring it over to you guys. Big, big sphingid, another sphinx moth. It's bugs on me. Very hefty moth. Look at that big thoracic hump where all those wing muscles are stored. Very powerful flyer. Okay. Add it to my collection. A fine addition to my collection. Oh, okay. Okay, so we had a great time. We found quite a few of these beautiful Chrysina. Beautiful Chrysina wood eye. Absolutely spectacular beetles. And we're gonna shut down the light trap, call it a night, because we found exactly what we've come here to find. One of the most beautiful scarab beetles in Texas. All right.